Meeting is called to order at 631. And welcome to the May 14th Select Board meeting. We are still at the middle school where town meeting continues following this meeting. Um, and uh, we have a bunch of things on our agenda tonight as well as a couple things that have been added since this was printed. So we are going to get started. Unfortunately, the attorney for our first item stepped out of the room, so we will take this time to do a couple of uh, untimed items. Um, Ms. Stein, would you like to do the parking and street closure request for Taste of Amherst? Sure. I move that the select board approve the following street closing slash parking request from the Amherst Area Chamber of Commerce for the annual Taste of Amherst event. Place no parking bags on parking meters around the perimeter of the town common, including the north and south sides of the Spring Street lot, beginning Thursday, June 14, 2012, from noon to 9 p.m., Friday, June 15, 2012, from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., Saturday, June 16, 2012, from noon to 10 p.m., and Sunday, June 17, 2012, noon to 4 p.m., to accommodate taste vendor parking. Close Boltwood Avenue between Spring Street and Route 9 on Friday, June 14, 2012, and Saturday, June 16, 2012, from 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., Peak pedestrian crossing times for the beer and wine tasting. Bravely done. Second. All right. Uh, Mr. Misanti notes a typo. It should be Thursday, June. Or Friday. Or, I'm sorry, Friday, June 15th. The, the bottom question. bullet. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Wald, you're saying aye? That is four in favor, one absent. All right, take care of that item. All right, next up, we've got our public hearing. Uh, this is for uh, Lit, the nightclub that backs on, or fronts on, the uh, Boltwood Garage. Um, this public hearing is called to order at 6.34 p.m. And we have a bunch of information in our packets about this. I'll do my usual little preamble to this. Um, this is a, an existing uh, all liquor license in downtown Amherst. Uh, because the select board has to approve very specific details about the liquor license, any change to that requires a uh, coming before us for approval. This is an alteration of premises. They are looking to expand to outdoor seating. This request has already gone through and been approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals. So if anybody has any concerns about the outdoor dining part of it, it's kind of too late for that. That can already happen. Our consideration is only about whether we grant them a liquor license to, uh, to enjoy with their dining. So with that, I welcome the attorney to please come up and introduce yourself for Thanks. the home. Uh, good evening, Attorney Tom Reedy uh, from Bacon Wilson on behalf of Modi One, doing business as the lid. Um, as uh, Madam Chairman noted, it's an application for expansion of an annual all alcohol restaurant license to include uh, an outdoor patio. Um, the outdoor patio is going to consist of approximately 406 square feet for service and consumption. Uh, Lit is the, the current licensee. They've been in business since about 2011, um, and there have been no issues. Uh, they've never been in front of me for any disciplinary action or uh, any violations. Um, as you'll see in your packet there, um, we did go in front of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals, and there were certain parameters that they set for the special permit. Um, I'm going to go through a few of them, and if you, um, I hope you've had the opportunity to read the packet, um, so I hope I'm not wasting your time, but I'd like to point out a few. Um, they have approved outdoor dining of a patio consisting of 406 square feet, no more than 30 seats and or patrons and five tables, um, outdoor dining fence, a minimum of six feet six inches uh, provided between the outdoor dining fence and the Knights of Columbus property line. Uh, the fencing shall be no higher than four feet. Hours of operation, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., seven days a week. Uh, all patrons must be out of the outdoor dining area by 11 p.m. Um, and there's kind of a unique setup. The outdoor dining furniture, including all the fencing tables and chairs, from November 1st to March 1st, they're going to keep it off premises. But every night, they're also going to uh, remove and store it so it won't stay in the same place. Um, alcohol will only be served to those seated for the purpose of dining and shall be served in accordance with all applicable requirements that you may put on it. If you've had the opportunity to look at the plans, there is an individual bar in, um, the, in, in the outdoor patio area. 
Um, one of our concerns, and I'll get to this when we go through the guidelines that the ABCC has uh, promulgated in order to allow for such expansion to patio and outdoor areas. Um, we wanted to make sure that there wasn't any traffic between the physical building and this outdoor patio. And that was something we were, we thought, okay, how do we do that? And it was to make sure not only to have security and staff sufficient to ensure such, but also we put a bar outside so that when the bar is outside, people in that area can get their beverage and stay in the area, not to leave it to walk to, they can leave. They have to leave the drink there and go to the other area. Um, so that, I, I think that was one of our greatest concerns, and I think it's been addressed uh, adequately in, in the plans. Um, there's also a management plan attached to the application. Uh, I hope you had the chance to review. It's very detailed, and, and I think you can see from it that there's a lot of thought that has gone into this application as far as um, circumstances of, of emergencies, or just ensuring that public safety is um, upheld to the, to the maximum. Um, four employees will be employed in the outdoor dining. Um, a hostess will be stationed at the entrance to that. A waiter or waitress will serve patrons in the outside. Servers will use the side door along the west side of the building to transport food to the outdoor patio and all the food will be uh, prepared in the current lit kitchen. Um, and then, like I said, all issues with uh, regard to access and emergency egress were discussed with the fire department and the issues uh, were pretty much vetted out with the Zoning Board of Appeals process. Um, as far as the, there's, you know, there are is seven guidelines that the ABCC has put forward. Um, you need to apply for a license, which we're doing currently. Um, We've got a detailed plan for outdoor patio area, square footage, 406 square feet, five tables, six chairs per table, total seating of 30 patrons. Uh, we've got a 30 uh, as the occupancy figure, and there's an outdoor bar as uh, provided on the plan. Um, in accordance with the management plan, uh, the licensee will also have four staff members servicing the outdoor patio. Um, we'll have fencing according to the plan that was provided to the ZBA, and uh, yeah. The special permit fencing cannot be higher than four feet, and the exact type of fencing must be in accordance with the types of fencing that were provided uh, to the Zoning Board of Appeals and the application uh, to them. The staff members will ensure that no alcohol is passed over the fence to any individuals outside of the licensed area. Um, and like I highlighted, the one concern would be, oh, well, what about people carrying drinks? And I think we've addressed that as far as sufficient staffing to ensure that if you're inside, drinks and you stay inside. If you're outside, the drinks stay outside for service and consumption. Um, the fire department has indicated that all emergency egress requirements have been met. Uh, the licensing authority should consider the type of neighborhood and the ZBA address those concerns with regard to noise level, outdoor music and lighting. Um, and uh, preferred by the ABCC are outdoor areas where alcohol is served to patients who are seated at tables. And I think, as you'll see, the, the applicant has proposed that um, there will be tables. It's not going to be that people are going to be standing out, hanging up. It's for the tables to have outdoor dining, and it seems like a well thought out plan. Um, so if you've got any questions, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Thank you. Questions and comments from Select Board. Ms. Hayden. Yeah, is the full menu available outside as well? Is, um, is it from the inside? I'll have to check yes. with it's on full service. It says full service. I, 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 would, I would imagine it's the full menu available outside as well. I'm sorry. I'm, it's the I'm, same I'm, kitchen, I understand. That's, but yeah, yeah that's, that's the thing. I, I, as far as I understand, it is the full menu outside. Okay. And it is specific that it's only for folks who are dining. Right. So. Yep, yep. Right. Right. Other yeah. questions from Select Board? All right. Uh, questions or comments from the public? Yes, sir. Um, represent the Amherst Knights of Columbus, Bill Hutchinson. And all my comments is, one is if they keep the area as neat as they have since they've done the inside business, it will be an improvement over what it's been in the past. And I also want to note that the graffiti on the alleyway has diminished somewhat because of the coming and going, and with the outside, hopefully even more. Thank you very much. Other questions or comments from the book about this application? 
All right. Uh, I will note that it is an extremely uh, detailed packet of information that was provided. Mm -hmm. this, the Zoning Board of Appeals process, per usual, was extremely thorough. Um, Select board members will note that uh, that the original plans were changed to accommodate the number of inches that were necessary to satisfy inspections and uh, mm -hmm. and fire for emergency situations. Um, so, uh, so I think that, that, that all that information is extremely thorough and complete and appreciated, Mr. Hayden. And along those lines, I just noticed the number of uh, tables was reduced from the, for the same reason to fit the bar, I assume. Correct. All right. Uh, going once, twice, three times on public comment on this before I close the public hearing. All right, then. Uh, I would move to close public hearing. Thank you. Yeah. Move to pu close public hearing at 642. Is there a second? Mm. Second to close the public hearing. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> did you want to, Mr. Romani, who is a manager and owner of, of the uh, establishment in question, did you want to offer any comment on this? Your attorney has represented you well. Okay. Um, no, to the president, I don't want to say anything. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Well, one question was, will you serve a full menu outside? And then my question is, are you the manager? I was looking to put a manager on the motion. Uh, sure. Yes, I, I will be the I will be the operating manager. Okay. So you. and there will be a full menu outside. Okay. Thank you. All right. We'll try again for closing the public hearing. Is motion to close the public hearing at six forty three, without objection. Then we'll close the public hearing at six forty three. All right. Public hearing is closed. Deliberation by the select board on this application. Anyone, Mr. Wald? Just it's it's a great place and it's a very thorough plan and it's also very nice to have the Knights of Columbus here. You know, we appreciate when abutters come forward to say positive things as well as negative things. So mm -hmm. it's a sign that things are working well. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Other questions or comments from Select Board? Or comments? Um, I'll just note that uh, I, I think that it's a tremendous way of investing in that area, which um, with the new apartment building and other things that are going on there is just really kind of getting to be more and more vibrant and uh, and Nothing says vibrancy like outdoor dining, I think. So I think it's a wonderful addition. All right. So, Ms. Stein, would you like to make a motion? I move that the select board approve the application of Modi One Incorporated doing business at Slit 41 Boltwood Walk, Amherst, MA, ABCC license number 00240009. Relative to alteration of premises to include an outdoor patio consisting of approximately 406 square feet with no more than five tables and 30 seats available between the hours of 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., seven days a week, in accordance with special permit FY 2012 0001. Outdoor Seating Management Plan revised January 12, 2012, and guidelines for extension of premises for patio and outdoor areas issued by Massachusetts <coughs> Alcoholic Beverage Commission Manager Risa Ramani. Second. Thank you. Motion has been moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you for coming in. Uh, any idea when this might open? I don't know yet. Um, nice weather's coming. Yes, it does. I've got all the other Thank you. Thank you. And I'm off to one All right, then, <laughs> moving right along. Um, we're now taking positions on warrant articles, and our first one is Article 1 of the special town meeting that happens tonight. This is not something we've had the opportunity to discuss at Select Board. We have referred to it. Um, in a nutshell, we know that this is a technicality. The vote that was taken um, last November. November on War Memorial Pool included reference to Mass General Law about the grant that we hope to receive to cover 75% of its funding. Inadvertently, it had a typo in that um, Mass General Law reference. Uh, the folks at the state will not let us proceed without fixing this before June 30th, and because a great deal of money is at stake, we have to make sure we correct this. Um, Mr. Musanti, is there anything else to note about uh, this? No, that's exactly it. This is a unfortunate but necessary uh, special town meeting article to correct a typo. So it's a housekeeping issue more than anything. Um, this time, would you like to make a motion to sure. recommend Article 1? 
I move that the select board recommend to the May 14, 2012 special town meeting, Article 1, Capital Program War, War Memorial Pool. Second. For the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Who aye. would like to speak to this? I am speaking You're to right. it. It's <laughs> programmed. Oh, great. And I'm ready. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Ready and eager. Press a button. Yeah. Uh, well, Next up. It's my pool. <laughs> Uh, next up, we have Article 29. This is a continuing discussion about um, the petition article originally proposed as a bylaw for sharing information with federal agencies. We have talked several times here at this meeting with the petitioners about uh, turning this into a resolution rather than a bylaw um, because select board, town council, chief of police, and others had expressed uh, concerns about the ability to actually be able to enforce this uh, as a bylaw and hence uh, hence that affected the select board's ability to support it. We all wanted to support it. Mr. Musanti, town council, and others have been working with the petitioners to put together language that hopefully is acceptable to all. We did receive the draft language um, in our packets. It is on the web if folks are interested. And Mr. Musanti, more you'd like to say about that? Sure, just very briefly. Uh uh, as you indicated at, at your April 30th meeting, you asked me to pursue with the petitioners and town council and Chief Livingstone the prospects for uh, modifying the petition in the form of a motion so that it becomes a resolution as opposed to a bylaw. Uh, we did develop a draft that was shared with uh, Ruth Hook and the other petitioners uh, late last week. Uh, they have indicated to me their Support for a resolution form did offer one suggested addition uh, that's in your packet from today uh, to add an additional sentence uh, to the extent permissible by law immigration detainer requests will not be honored by the Amherst Police Department. I did review that with Chief Livingstone and Town Council. We are uh, totally fine with that addition uh, and have presented a draft resolution that incorporates that and uh, you, may wanna, you, you, you may want to hear from the petitioners and but it's something that I know I can speak favorably on tonight in that town meeting. All right. Uh, Ms. Hook, as a lead petitioner, would you like to uh, speak to how you feel about the compromise and the resolution? Yes, I, I'm very satisfied and I really appreciate the town manager's effort in this behalf. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Musanti, you want to select board members have any questions or comments about this? Mr. Hagan. No, I'm, I'm particularly grateful to the extra effort that, that was made to get it to work because I, mean, I think it does reflect what Amherst is about and certainly as the, the website for the police department demonstrates. Thank you. Anyone else like to comment, Ms. Burke? And so the, just to be sure I'm clear, the final version does include the, the bolded sentence on yes. one of our handouts, to the extent permissible by law, immigration detainer requests will not be honored by the Amherst Police Department. Yes. That's right. <clears throat> yeah. Further question or comment from Select Board? All right, from the public, please introduce yourself for folks at home. Yeah, hi, uh, Ben Grosskopf, Precinct 9. Um, I've been working uh, along with uh, Ruth and some of the other petitioners. And I have a question for um, Mr. Livingstone. Okay. Yes. Um, I was wondering if you could explain just sort of how the Amherst Police Department currently um, deals with detainers and given what the uh, statement from DHS is that as of tomorrow, mm -hmm. secure communities will become mandatory in Massachusetts. Um, I guess I have a two-part question. Number one, do you think that uh, it's likely that the town of Amherst will be starting to get detainer requests from DHS? Um, and if it does start happening, how will the um, Amherst Police Department uh, respond to that uh, given if, if, if this resolution passes? Thank you. Or, Just to make sure um, folks can hear you, if you wouldn't mind coming up to the seat so the, the mic's catch up. We don't, um, first of all, as far as past detainers, um, none of us could recall, myself included, having ever been served a detainer before. Mm -hmm. So that being said, uh, we haven't had to deal with the, the, the issue before, but the, the wording in this resolution uh, is actually pretty consistent with the department policy and procedure. So. We don't anticipate there being this huge influx of detainers all of a sudden. Uh, the fact that the governor had 
and opted out of the original secure communities. Uh, didn't really have a lot of weight with the uh, home and security and ICE uh, the way they did business. So just because he had opted out now that they had changed their protocol, we really don't expect to see any, this massive uh, all of a sudden influx of detainers. So, you know, uh, we will abide by the resolution and um, detainers are just that, their request. Um, so, um, you know, we'll see how it plays out. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Oh, more follow up if I may agree. Sure, sure. Um, I'm wondering if, uh, like, what kind of uh, public reporting process there could be put in place so that if the change system or if the situation changes with respect to DHS as it uh, pursues secure communities, uh, detainers are the main way that the program works to detain immigrants. Um, to, to put them into federal custody. I'm just wondering like, how you see po the possibility for, for that to be disclosed, like whether the uh, Amherst Police Department is receiving detainer requests. Again, you know, we haven't. Um, I spoke with the, the representative for the state of Massachusetts, the ICE representative, uh, today, as a matter of fact. And, and um, you know, we discussed that possibility of detainers coming through, and he really didn't think the, um, the, the detainers, would, if requested, probably wouldn't impact the local law enforcement agencies as much as it would the local jails. And uh, he felt that it be, would become more uh, more of an issue with the local sheriffs, that sort of thing, because, you know, they just don't really, they don't, in, in Massachusetts anyways, uh, <coughs> issue detainers for simple misdemeanors and that sort of thing. He kind of reassured me that they're, their goal, their vision, the process of which they would issue um, detainers would be more geared towards criminal offenders and, and not, not misdemeanor type offenses. At least that was the reassurance that he gave me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's very um, so I'm afraid you can't follow up. Um, for, this is about the select board taking a position to recommend this or not as a resolution versus a bylaw. And uh, so um, further information on how this would play out would be a great conversation to have with the chief and or at town meeting. But, um, but in the interest of doing the rest of our business tonight, um, I need for us to move on from this. Um, so does select board have any other questions or comments about the resolution as proposed? Anyone else in the public have any questions or comments about the resolution? All right, then, Ms. Diamond, I make the motion. I move that the select board recommend to the April 30th, 2012 annual town meeting, Article 29, regarding sharing of information with federal agencies as an amended resolution upon the recommendation of town manager John P. Musanti and petitioners. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That is unanimous. Um, from a technical standpoint, how do you envision this working? Do you plan to move the uh, amended I'm motion? I'm going to move and turn the amended item. Okay. Okay. Terrific. So, um, do we have to somehow get a copy of the amended article for everybody? No. But how should we do that? So we should probably make sure that there are copies. Um, we can on. make sure that happens, and I can work with you uh, in any Sorry. interaction with the moderator. To make sure the motion language itself is a, is a, is appropriate. You can be sure it won't come up tonight. So well, I think we're not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, who would like to speak to that? Anyone in particular? I would be happy to speak to I, it. I'd be happy to speak to it. Either Thank way. You. I won't find you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all, all right. Thank you. thank you very much, and thank you for the cooperation with coming yeah, to a, a, a compromise sure resolution that. that we could all uh, support. Yeah. Uh, all that you do. Uh, thank you. All right. Next up. You don't have to. Next up, we have other logistical issues related to town <clears throat> meeting, and tonight our issue is an amendment that's <clears throat> going to be proposed for um, Article 25, the North Amherst rezoning, uh, and we received <clears throat> a copy of the wording of the amendment uh, earlier today, and we also have that in front of us along with a map, and we have several folks here to talk to us about this. Uh, Mr. Anaya, would you like to come forward and talk about your amendment? Uh, if you can come up to the table and introduce yourself. It since then. Oh, and it's yeah. since been updated. Yeah. 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 Part of the packet. Okay. Hi. I'm, I'm Nolan Naya, precinct two. Thank 
Um, I've been a long-term uh, resident in Amherst. I've been following this uh, zone change for a long time. Uh, and recently, after joining a uh, town meeting, I decided, having known a lot of people on both sides, that I would uh, uh, search to try to come up with a solution that might help uh, change things a little bit. Um, so the amendment is basically twofold. Um, I went to the community. I talked to a lot of people uh, around the community about why this was such an uncomfortable zoning thing and contentious amongst uh, um, you know the people in the community. And what I found is that uh, two things stood out. One was that uh, the overall scope of this development was potentially too big for the rest of the community. Um, so what I was proposing to do is to remove everything from the uh, west side of um, Sunderland Road uh, and north of the Mill River to, to drop the uh, zoning uh, proposal to a much smaller, denser uh, population that's more in keeping with the rest of the community. Uh, the other major thing I heard from people in the community was to keep the integrity of Montague Road and allow uh, uh, the residential buffer from any uh, potential development to keep from sort of getting altered. And so what we came up with, uh, and again, I went then to met with a number of the landowners and, and the developers in the community, uh, and we came up with uh, removing these two uh, pieces of property that are on that map and return them to residential. Uh, and that would be keeping um, the houses as a buffer between this and the uh, the potential zone area. Um, I was very lucky to have a couple of the people from the direct houses across the way to work with me on this. Uh, Valerie um, Cooley, who's uh, Precinct 1, who lives directly across the street from one of these houses, who's been uh, um, having difficulty with this in her neighborhood, is now uh, giving us support and saying that she, she supports uh, uh, Article 25 because of some of the things that we've been able to do. Um, and I do believe that we have a fairly good supportive cast. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. McCanty, you wanted to mention that something has been further revised? <coughs> Uh, the, the map that Mr. Tucker handed out reflects the most recent version that uh, was was discussed uh, this afternoon. So I just wanted to make that clear to the select board. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and you know, I would just offer that I think this uh, these suggestions have some uh, uh, potential uh, to be positively received. And I wanted to point out that we have uh, staff as well as uh, two members of the planning board here for tonight. You might want to ask them. Ms. Brewer, thoughts. I, just to clarify, so the map we just got, the difference I'm seeing is this section. Is there another difference that I'm not perceiving? It's no. Versus what I had on the table versus what no. Mr. Tucker just gave us. So it, it adds it's the ROV. It's 4 o'clock instead of 2 o'clock. It left off the <laughs> before that. Right. That was part of the commercial. So the correct so one is the one that doesn't have anything on the other side of it because it's from Mr. Tucker. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Thank you. All right. So um, planning board folks, comment on this at all? Uh, Mr. Robert, please come forward so folks can hear you. You can pull up another chair or you can do whatever you want just so you're closer to these mics. This chair. <laughs> <laughs> whatever works. <laughs> yeah, hi, David Weber, Planning Board Chair. Um, for the, um, the Planning Board, when we considered this Article 25, um, we opted not to propose any amendments or changes to it to present it as is to town meeting. Um, <coughs> And obviously, without a full planning board meeting, we can't express an opinion on one way or the other. Would you care to comment on what the implications are of doing this, kind of the technical parts of how this changes the proposal? So this, this is more or less of what for folks at home? Well, there's, it would, for one, leave a portion of commercial zoning uh, to the west of Sunderland Road. Uh, that's the existing zoning. It's the area where the survival center is in Amherst Towing, uh, as well as the North Amherst <coughs> Motors, I believe, um, are all in that strip of land. Um, the two pieces along Montague Road um, currently are RN. Um, under the amendment, those would be changed to RVC. 
Is it the other way around? It would be kind You're down zoning, not. It'll, it'll go from right. RVC to, to RN. Well, no, it would stay the same. I mean, it would right. stay the same. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. That, is, that is somewhat down zoned from the village center. The village center mm -hmm. allows a slightly denser right. uh, residential development. Um, that is, residential village center is slightly more dense than neighborhood residents. Um, so they're both residential zones. Correct. Um, questions or comments from Selectman? Mr. Hayden. Well, a, a comment. I, I, I want to appreciate um, um, Mr. Naya's efforts at, at, at keeping this alive. I think this is an important um, step for Amherst to take. Um, I'm not sure, um, though, how I would ask my, my colleagues on the, the select, on the select board to to consider this, um, uh, I mean, we have, we usually consider two choices, yes or no, support or uh, inviting town meeting to support it or not. Um, I don't know, is there a third way saying that we like this a lot um, uh, and we urge you to vote on it? Um, we don't exactly have a third option. Um, so I think what you're saying is a little bit like, well, I'll see, uh, a little <laughs> yes. bit like what I'm thinking about this, which is um, I also greatly appreciate the efforts to try and to try and bring some compromise and, and to try and make this work. At the same time, I have a lot of concern process-wise. I hate the idea that this is now considered like the grand compromise when, in fact, this has been going on for a year. You know, this is uh, the the process of starting with with everything that's possible and then turning it into what is um, what is most in keeping with the master plan and what is um, the best compromise as expressed by all the various stakeholders at this great series of public meetings, coming to town meeting, getting a whole bunch of feedback when it almost passed before in a much larger form. I feel like what, what has been presented to town meeting by the planning board right now as Article 25 is the compromise. So this is, this is getting the deal done, potentially, as opposed to being a compromise. And from a process standpoint, I have a lot of concerns about that. I don't like the idea that you know, you come to town meeting and it's almost like um, the, the thing that it reminded me of is, uh, you know, when you put your house on the market and so if you put your house on the market for $400,000 mm -hmm. and, the, the, uh, and you think that that's, that's more than you'll probably get and so the seller offers three fifty because they figure you don't think you're really going to get four hundred, and then you're meeting in the middle. Like, I don't want that to be how zoning stuff is perceived as though, you know, you just give it a little trim at town meeting and because it really came in more, more grand or intense than it needed to be. So, so I, I don't like that part of it at all. I don't like the fact that the planning board and zoning subcommittee who own this have not had the chance to consider it. And yet, they really have considered all of these questions already and essentially rejected them. That's why, that's why the proposal is what it is. Um, all that being said, I have a hard time um, opposing this because I would also like to get the deal done. So it, it is kind of a complicated bunch of circumstances here. Um, I, uh, Mr. Hayden, you well, just to continue the, the conversation, <laughs> in, in the dialogue in a way, um, you know, yes, that, that's not quite what I was thinking, but it's very, very close. The, the, the other thing that, that I see, you know, as I look at this, uh, I went to a lot of these meetings, and so I have a very good idea of, of, of what you're responding to, and I appreciate that. Um, the other thing that I see, though, is that this is completely within sort of the, the, the standard operating procedure of town meeting to, to, you know, chop away stuff. You know, we do it in budgets. Um, you know, there's no reason at all that Harrison, that I can think, could imagine that Harrison could not allow this. Oh, I'm not saying so. That's so once it comes, yeah, yeah. Um, and and sort of, and I, I so I appreciate sort of under a, a comprehension, whether it's intentional or not, of that that sense of how town meeting um, is allowed or encouraged to deal with articles. So, well, that's that's all I want to add. Okay, Mr. Wild, you Two questions. Do you want comments about the substance or just the process right now? Anything. Oh, I mean, I, I'm again. I appreciate the, the efforts of Mr. and I and other people. It's been a long, hard process, and I know that there's a lot of ill will 
and so the more that we can do to compromise, the better as a general principle. Um, I suppose part of the problem for us is that just coming to us now, you know, hot off the, the copier, it's hard to take a stance. So I suppose, I mean, it is possible to vote not to take a position, right? In other words, we wouldn't be opposing it, but we simply have not had time to study it. Because one of the things that strikes me, again, it's interesting because it does seem to, you know, it does seem to re respond further to what residents wanted. I'm not sure to what extent, given your comments about the process, it refers to what the town wanted and sort of best <clears throat> planning principles. For example, one of the objections to the previous plan, that is the one that's normally before us at town meeting tonight, is that some of these areas it said in one of the letters from Ms. Cooley, which misinterprets the master plan in numerous places, it says, for example, uh, proposed NABC boundaries include undeveloped areas that abut conservation, recreation, agricultural land. Well, what we're doing right here is taking those NABC areas, NABC areas back to commercial, which in fact allows for a lot more rough, abusive, and unpleasant uses. Uh, so now they're not maybe on that land, but they're, they're, you know, they're, they're abutting the land, they're, not, they're on the land as well. It's actually worse in some ways from the standpoint of environment and sustainability. So. Mm -hmm. And it's per perfectly possible to change it at some later date. We should simply be aware that it's, it's a complicated fix that's being proposed here. Mm -hmm. uh, on this side of the table, it's for, um, beyond agreeing with everything else already said, is that I, I would like it to be really clear, and I'm not sure, and I mean, we can make it clear amongst ourselves, I'm not sure town meeting will understand that it is the compromise after many previous compromises. And perhaps compromise isn't even the right word because it's just scaled back. It's not like there was really a trade off. It's a matter of um, getting the deal done, as you say. I totally appreciate that it didn't wait till the floor, though. I think that there's points for that. <laughs> and I think there's a huge uh, point to not, in, like, not letting this get defeated, and perhaps even worse, getting it referred back to the planning board again. <clears throat> I really would hate to see that. So all things considered, I would be, I, I certainly will support it without maybe being totally thrilled about it, but I'll support it because I feel it's really important to do something and to start with form-based code to show people that it's not something terrifying. Um, and I also, I mean, obviously it's up to us as a board what we want to do, but I think that we could easily say, that we still maintain our original position, that we want the original. But just as we would say, I'm sure that if somebody said, well, what does the select board think of referral? I'm sure we'd say, no, we don't, we don't agree with referral. I think we could say that we do support this if necessary. Ms. Steiner, do you have Well, I, I, that's where I think I would be. I prefer the original um, proposed zoning, but I, sh I would like this as a fallback position. So I don't know how we put that in a resolution except to say, um, I don't like to say that, I don't know. It's, it's a little, it's a weird motion. So it, it does, it puts us in kind of a funny position when we would like, we would like to give it its best chance of passage in the, in the whole, um, uh, in the Article 25 form. And unfortunately, just the way town meeting works, you have to put the amendment out there, and then the amendment has to pass or fail first, when it almost feels like Article 25 should pass or fail first, and then say, okay, if that didn't work, then how about with this? But that's not how it works. So it sort of feels like giving away um, a, a bunch of what's good about the article when you don't even know if that's going to be enough to get it passed. More um, comment, sure. Absolute respect to everything that's happened up to now. Um, I feel extremely uh, uh, satisfied knowing that there has been a huge amount of comp uh, compromise and a huge, amount, a huge amount of effort that's gone into it all along to get to here. And I'm not suggesting I'm stepping in and changing the um, I am. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> There's not to suggest it. <laughs> but what I was feeling and starting to understand is that there was a very good chance that um, 25 would, would fail. And that in the understanding that if 25 failed, it would have a much, much worse uh, 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 repercussion to have to go through and do it all again. And that with, the, with that on the table and with the number of people feeling uncomfortable about that, we were able to reach some understanding with people that I don't think we have, I have felt was there before. 
And so, absolutely, this is a this is a jump from the hip, shoot from the hip thing. And I understand your concerns. It makes perfect sense, and I sure hope that next town meeting we don't see the same thing happen. Um, but if this is what helps pass what we've all been looking to do in our community and my community, then that is what I should. Mr. Weber, you had raised your hand earlier. Oh, um, yes, thank you. Um, I also appreciate your efforts in going to the community and trying to find out what they wanted. I mean, that was what the uh, plan board and some of the subcommittees were doing all along is to try to involve the community. And the, the, with respect to the parcels along uh, Lyon Road, uh, the RBC parcels for putting the community as our end, uh, that was the among the you know possibilities that the plan board considered. In the end, we decided to do that, uh, but it was a question that we considered. Um, we didn't consider leaving out the area next to um, Sutherland Road, um, but I would say that you know, looking at these changes, um, you know, the, uh, there's substantially more than half a lot left after taking those pieces out. Um, <coughs> So I'd like to maybe suggest three things. First of all, this is clearly a compromise. And, and, and I think that we accept this as a compromise. Second, I'd like to make today the first day that I start the campaign to um, occupy the word compromise. Um, it's not always a, a bad thing. I mean, it used to mean that it was working to try to figure out the, the way that everybody could um, um, <clears throat> accept it as working. Um, modern politics being what they are, the word compromise has become very dirty, and I think we can end that. Um, we should end that. And third, um, I remember my, uh, and, and uh, maybe Mr. Tuck will remember this, uh, it might have been my third planning board meeting as chair when um, we stumbled across the idea that we might defer to town meeting the decision, sort of without compromise, one, or without, um, I guess that's the word, right, compromise one way or another. And I, I don't know if we can do that here on the select board. Having said all of that, that stuff with appreciation. So, so I, uh, I just want to respectfully reject your notion of compromise. Well, okay. Uh, because really, the, it's, it, the compromise has to be among mm -hmm. all, mm -hmm. all parties, yep. all stakeholders involved in a way where they can all give legitimate input. And that has been meetings, you know, two Wednesday nights a month for, for many months now. Um, this is a last minute, you know, here I can get some mm -hmm. people maybe to, to change their vote if, if we do this. That's not exactly a compromise, it's more like, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it's interesting because I share this sense of, you know, wanting to get something done here. At the same time, you know, I'm like a process of heat here, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, I, I really feel like the body, the town, should bear the consequences of the decisions of the body. So if the decision of the body is, you know what, it's mm -hmm. not ready in its final form, it needs more process, then, all right, then, then that's what we need to do. Um, this is a funny way of, of kind of doing a little bit of that, and again, I, I, I'm really concerned about what it means kind of for next time. What it means for people participating in the process when it's it's so difficult to get people to participate in the process, except for those who hate everything they like to participate. Um, but what does it mean at the end of that process if you say, oh yeah, the, the process we're kind of throwing that out the window, and now we're going to kind of do some quick and dirty thing to get it done at the end? I, I think it I think it it bodes poorly for the public processes that we want people to be involved in. All this being said, I'm not going to approve this. Um, I, I think that a, a position of support from the select board isn't exactly what we're doing. I think we're saying, you know, well, if, if, this is, if this is what it takes, then there we go. But, but our support is for our other things. Yeah. I think just, I mean, I think that's a, the sense that I have, but also just to, to address the referral question, we did go up unanimously and very enthusiastically five to zero to the different measures. I think we still have very important. There's no reason to be afraid of it. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, sharing almost as much sentiment as you have about the process, but not quite as much as maybe I would suggest that you not have to From that standpoint, <laughs> the amendment comes up. Because I, I do think that the process question gets just too complicated from the standpoint of people tuning in about the process. I totally agree with what you said at the same time. I'm not sure it's, it's the time to file it. One thing I would like to speaks to is to mention that is I think that when, and, and I thought of it again when he said, well, if the body says it's not that important, then it should go back to the process. Process has come to me, you know, we talk about compromise, there's a whole bunch of those words now, and process is actually one of those too, because I hear a lot about, we don't have a very good process, but what the person actually means is we didn't have a good <laughs> And when they say, you didn't listen to us, but what they mean is, you listen to us a lot, you just don't mean it. And so I think that's an incredibly important thing for people to recognize that not only were there all those meetings, it wasn't just like, I was saying, yeah, 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 It was, the, <laughs> there was actual back and forth and saying, you know, I hear what you're saying, but I still think this is what makes sense for our community. And there, obviously, it's not like we're suddenly going to get a zillion votes for this compromise, because there are still people who are going to say, I don't care what you call it. I don't care what type of kind of thing it is. I'll never vote for this thing, no matter what, because I need to know what. And um, I'm just hoping that this will help us get in there, that we show people what this is going to be. Yeah, I would just uh, say a couple more things. Uh, uh, share the uh, concerns that have been expressed about process, uh, but the legislative uh, process, uh, which in our town, the legislature is the town meeting. Uh, you know, the ability to move amendments and consider amendments is, is a part of uh, the town meeting. Um, the, uh, I also agree and have expressed this uh, before an at town meeting that the uh, recommended proposal put forth by the planning board was something I strongly support. And I think that is, in my opinion, the best way to move forward. Uh, but I also think that uh, coming out of this town meeting with no changes, you know, we have more with uh, the likelihood of a lot more process uh, and uh, no movement uh, whatsoever on the zoning changes uh, to me hurts the ultimate process, which is improving uh, the village center in North Hunts. Uh In the last two years, we have taken action steps as a town to begin to address multi-million dollar backlog of road repairs, including many in North Amherst, uh, Meadow Street, uh, paving and the uh, improvement of sidewalks and bike lanes. Uh, the intersection of 116 has been upgraded by the, uh, uh, by the state. Uh, the capital article uh, uh, that's already been voted for roads includes monies for this year where we do pave uh, Sunderland Road from the North Amherst Library all the way out to 116. And we repair and actually connect the sidewalk from the North Amherst Library to Coles Road. Uh, we will be attempting a second try at a very large uh, state grant of about $4.8 million to finally fix Pine Street, but at the same time uh, uh, be able, we hope, to install uh, bike lanes as well as make sidewalk uh, improvements and in the cases of some sections, installing a sidewalk. Uh, the state, uh, in a very competitive grant program last year, thought our proposal was very, very strong, uh, but they were quite candid with us that the biggest impediment to securing $4.8 million of state economic development funds to do the work was that we couldn't explicitly link it to a vision uh, that was firm uh, for North Amherst Village Center. And what we were able to say is that we're actively working on a zoning proposal uh, 
uh, last year at this time uh, that wasn't ready yet and that was pending town meeting review and approval. Uh, so to the extent we want to make North Amherst Village Center more robust uh, and more walkable, livable, uh, I would love to do it with a lot of help from the state and federal government financially because uh, uh, we've got another $15 million to go on town roads. And I prefer to get some help to pay for it rather than the taxpayers at this time. So uh, one way to get Pine Street and the Village Center more walkable uh, is to be able to get this grant. And one way to be able to get the grant is to have some progress on Village Center uh, rezoning. Uh, in, in all of the back and forth, I think there's been, uh, relatively speaking, more conceptual support for redevelopment in the so-called triangle area. The, the, uh, area uh, uh, surrounded by Sunland Road and Montague Road and Coles Road. And that's what this uh, scaled down version of the, of the zoning would, would still accomplish. And so I think on that basis, uh, we're able to make some progress, see some redevelopment that we hope is attractive, uh, consistent with the zoning, and then we, we go from there. Thank you. Um, I just want to uh, emphasize that I don't think there's anything remotely illegitimate about making an amendment to the zoning proposal. I mean, that's that's exactly what town meeting is for. I, my concern is only the position it puts the select board in as far as making a recommendation on that. Um, so, Mr. Hayden. I'd like to sound a maybe a slightly different note. I don't know how much you enjoy sausage, but we really <laughs> appreciate you coming to us beforehand yes. and allowing us to, to think about this out loud and sort of, you know, at the reference to up in Sinclair and, and sure. so thank you. I, right. just, I just wanted to be you know, to say thank you for that. Yes, it, it really does. It helps to kind of flesh out the ideas and, and all of the kind of the context in which all of these decisions get. And it may not so have been that much it's fun. It's much appreciated. Um, all right, select board, what are we going to do? Are we taking no position? We're, we're not opposing this. We strongly endorse Article 25 strongly and we not don't opposing oppose it. the amendment, Mr. Uh, I'm just I'm not sure why we would just vote to say if amended that we, this is the amendment we would. Just because there might be other amendments, I would rather say that we'll live with this amendment. It seems unlikely that there are any others that come up on the floor that we would be able to take a position on. But this one we could actually. Has our grudging support? <laughs> yes. <laughs> does uh, this doesn't work like money does? It, it's not like we do the bigger first. No. We <clears throat> do the amendment first, which is which is weird. It really yeah. seems like it should go the other way. Yeah. All right, uh, Mr. Wald is speaking to this on our behalf. Do you think you can capture more or less? You <laughs> <laughs> tell me what to that. say. So, so are, are we going to say that our position is still? We have not. We have our original vote in favor of Article 25. We do not take a position on this amendment. However, having seen this amendment, we would find it preferable to any of those that might conceivably in the universe of possibilities that arise. It, it helps move <laughs> the ball down the field. Right. <laughs> Mr. Weber. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. You might, you might say that um, even if the amendment passes, you still support it. And, but under the consideration of the amendment, we really want to be saying very strongly that it's Article 25 that we think should pass, um, considering the circumstances of the amendment. Mm -hmm. It's as good as it gets or something like that. I mean, we're not urging anybody to oppose the amendment. Um, but we're, Worst you know. things could happen to you. <laughs> 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 this could be nothing. Mr. Knight, did you want to say something else? I, also, I just wanted to say that if you felt like this amendment hurt 25, I'd be happy to pull it out. We thought we had the votes past 25. If we think this is the best way to pass 25, then all off. If only we had a crystal ball. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's my home. Thank you. Um, I appreciate uh, that. Sorry. And and I do respect the process and the concept of making sure I talk to Jonathan and whoever else I can get to right away was what I was trying. To and we appreciate yeah. that very much. And, and I hope that it's very clear to you that that, that what you what you've done, um, we <coughs> appreciate the 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 idea behind it, the process behind it. It's just kind of in the greater scheme of things, we're sort of looking at what this means in the future as well as now. It, it might sound a little sarcastic, but if there are any town meeting members who think their only job is to just read the material, when we have a new town meeting member who runs a business and has run around talking to all these people <laughs> to try yeah. and make this yeah. work over the last several Do days, um, 
I think there needs to be like a special a loud applause. <laughs> uh, do you do you happen to know Ms. O'Keefe? Um, I think I would remember by now. But if a motion to refer back comes up, which one takes precedence? Because a lot of this is timing. I don't know. Okay. Okay. So I think are we we'll figure really, out we're sort of clear. All right. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for all your effort. Thank on this. you so much. Okay, select board. We do have, if we can bear it, just a couple more tiny things to do, if you don't yeah, mind, which is yeah. better than meeting us, on Wednesday. Um, Speaking of housekeeping, okay. Uh, yes, please. This. I move that the select board approve the special line and malt liquor license for Amherst area Chamber of Commerce for beer and wine tasting at the Amherst Liquor Mart, Amherst Town Center, 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 Amherst on the following dates, June 14, 2012, from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., June 15, 2012, from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., June 16, 2012, from 12 p.m. to 10 p.m., June 17, 2012, from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Second. Discussion. That's a great okay, event. Say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Okay. Uh, that's the I move though. that the select board approve the reservation of four parking spaces on the west side of the Spring Street parking lot, as shown on the GIS map titled Tapestry Mobile Health Ban from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Thursday, June 7, 2012, for the Mobile Health Ban to provide access to rapid HIV testing in the Amherst community. Second. Further discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Unanimous. Were you raising your hand? I'm sorry. Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, I think you're out of time, so I won't ask you to do anything, but I just wanted to make you aware, if you weren't already, that there are going to be probably two amendments. Article 17 comes up to reduce the amount of the budget, one by 40 and one by $80,000. They're going to probably, from our understanding, have an argument having to do with um, planning um, positions and uh, just in case you have the ability to take a position or not, I just wanted to make sure it's your attention. Thank you very much. All right, right. Amherst College Reunion. I move that the select board approve the use of available town center permit parking on Sealy, Spring, and Church Streets on Thursday, May 24th, 2012, and Friday, May 25th, 2012, for Amherst alumni with a numbered 2012 reunion parking permit hang tag displayed on the rear view mirror. Second. Further discussion, Mr. Hayden. Uh, have, have we ever seen a request like this? No, so they had a bunch of problems with people getting ticketed last year. This is kind of part of a bigger discussion about yes. why we're continuing to have town center parking in effect through the end of May, but this is sort of the quick and easy way around it right now, so people don't get tickets unnecessarily. Okay. Yes, and yeah. our parking people are in the loop on this, and yeah. we're good. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Um, did adjourn? folks get a chance? No. no. Did folks get a chance to read that letter to ACTV that I sent out earlier? Yes. This is a yeah. topic oh, not no. anticipated not. 48 hours. It's just a simple letter it's saying, fine. they're wonderful, they're wonderful. Do we all mind signing it? Okay, good. Thank you. We approve signing it. Um, so Article 17, we don't have, yes. we really have no ability to deal with that right now. Anybody else have anything else in this group? I didn't know this. What? So the, so the, so oh, sorry. Were we supposed to know this? Um, actually, um, Mr. Oldham had given us uh, a slip of paper that we passed down the, the yeah. row slip the of other paper? day. Yeah, oh. and I think uh, maybe Mr. O'Connor maybe has the other one. That one didn't actually come to our table, but there have been rumblings. Okay. So I mean, I know there have been rumblings, but there's I'm nothing prepared to speak to so that far. and hopefully okay. answer. Um, so questions satisfactorily right. for town meeting. The only other question before I send is do we need to meet Wednesday? I don't think we do because we dealt with all of these things. Right. So we're good, Mr. Walter. Can I just ask Mr. Steinberg a quick question about that? Sure. Do, I know what some of those are about. Do they, do they bear on the zoning article? Um, is, that, is that what you're trying to tell us? That Because I know some people were saying Article 25 shouldn't go forward if we don't do the traffic and housing study first. Um, I think that I'd have to turn back to Mr. Musanti for, for a better answer on that. There were two studies that uh, we talked about. One had to do with Correct. North Amherst traffic, and the other had to do with gateway and housing. And I, um, the um, notice we were given said there were going to be motions to amend, so it was only in verbal statements outside of the motions that we were offered. Nice. 
but the understanding I had is that that was the arguments that were going to be made, that that's why it should be reduced. I also note that motions to reduce are motions to reduce the um, amount of the appropriation, the bottom line, um, but it is really not a town meeting action to deal with the specific. All right, sure. so we're not going to meet Wednesday. We've done all that we can here tonight. Am I missing? <coughs> I thought we had a. Do we have something else? No, that's all right. You've okay. passed everything for tonight. I just thought we had an agenda for Wednesday. It's a lot of confused. Oh, we had created one, but it's just on spec in case we okay. need <laughs> All right, then. Uh, Seconds. Without objection, this meeting adjourns at 7.32 p.m. Thank you.